Mm, I love Thanksgiving. I love food so much. I love good food. And if you love good food, you definitely came to the right place. It's me, Gretchen, from Gretchen's Bakery, and I'm back again with another new episode for my new series, How to Cook Vegan for Beginners. And I'm so excited to share with you today my vegan Thanksgiving dinner for one. One. And I know that may sound like a sad story right off the bat, and there actually is a story behind it, and I actually did spend Thanksgiving all alone for very many years. So as a lot of you probably know, I owned a bakery for 10 years, and anyone who knows what the food service industry is like during the holidays, you probably already know why I spent many Thanksgivings by myself. So yes, the workload leading up to a big holiday like that, and Thanksgiving is actually the second biggest holiday of the year next to Christmas. And so just the amount of work that goes into preparing and executing and pulling off a big holiday like that is just absolutely insane. And so by the end of the day on Thanksgiving Day, I was toasted. I was done. There was no way, shape, or form that I was ready, willing, or able to do anything more than put my pajamas on and go onto the couch with my tofurkey and my winkle bean. And we would cuddle up and have our little Thanksgiving feast and fall asleep on the couch watching How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And then that would segue us in to the Christmas holiday, which started literally the day after Thanksgiving in the bakery and went for a whole month long with no days off and no stopping. So basically, it was definitely my choice to spend Thanksgiving Day alone. Don't get me wrong, I had plenty of invitations. My mom had already moved to Florida and my sister was doing the Thanksgiving thing with her husband and his family. So it was sort of like, you know what? I think I'm just gonna spend Thanksgiving alone. But I never did go one Thanksgiving without having a holiday feast. And I've been vegetarian for about nine years now, so I've always had pretty much a vegan Thanksgiving. And I wanna share with you guys today my recipes that I've been using over the years. They've been slightly varied, but they've all definitely gotten better over the years as my cooking skills have gotten better. So I really think you guys are gonna love these recipes. I've got everything from mashed cauliflower with mushroom gravy, roasted Brussels sprouts and roasted sweet potatoes, apple sage and sausage stuffing with homemade cranberry sauce, and of course, don't forget the main attraction. This year I'm using a field roast because I couldn't get my hands on a tofurkey this early in the game, but the field roast is definitely, definitely a good choice. So check out all of these recipes. I'm leaving the timestamps below in the description box in case there's something that you just wanna skip over or skip to. That way you don't have to watch the whole entire video if you're just looking for something specific. And I'm definitely going to speed the video up a little bit so that you don't have to sit through like an hour of the preparation of this. You'll get the drift on how to make these recipes and just wait till you see this. Oh yeah, and don't forget the maple cream cake that I'm using this year. I decided to kind of forego the traditional pumpkin pie route and check out this new recipe. If you guys haven't seen it already, you're definitely going to want to check it out after this. Alright, so let's start with the cauliflower and I'm simply just getting that big stalk off of there, cutting them into florets that are about the same size pieces, cutting off some of the stems so it's just really the flowery part of the cauliflower. And then I cook them and prepare them the same way that I would for mashed potatoes. Just boil up the florets until they're fork tender, then drain everything as well as possible, get everything to a food processor, and I just add some vegan butter, vegan parmesan cheese to mine with a hefty dose of salt and pepper. This can actually be made a couple of days ahead of time and just reheated before serving. 
Next, to make my mushroom gravy, and I've got mushrooms, onions, garlic, flour, nutritional yeast, soy sauce, salt, pepper, and sage, and vegetable stock. Now, I've adapted this recipe to be fat-free, so instead of using a half a cup of oil that the original recipe called for, I'm using vegetable stock with the onions and garlic and just bring all of that up to a boil. Like most gravy recipes, you will thicken it with the flour, but because I'm not using any oil or butter here, my roux is a bit less traditional, but I'm still able to whisk it out as much as possible, cooking it for about a minute to let that flour absorb, and then I'll add in the rest of the vegetable stock, the nutritional yeast, salt, pepper, sage, and then the soy sauce. Now, I like to blend mine smooth so there's no chunks of onion or garlic in there, and I'm just using a stick blender to do that, but you can pour everything into a regular blender too. Now, last, I'll add the mushrooms and just let it all cook down over a low heat to a simmer. This recipe can also be made a couple of days ahead of time and then reheated before serving. Now for my cranberry sauce. I love this recipe and I'm using cranberry moscato wine this time that I picked up last week at the farm market. But you can use cranberry juice or cherry juice if you don't want to use alcohol in this recipe. Vanilla extract and orange, star anise pods, ground cinnamon and sugar. Get the wine or the juice with the sugar and the spices and the orange zest to a large pot and then bring it up to a boil. Add the cranberries and then the juice from that orange and bring it all back up to a boil. Now reduce the heat to a simmer and just let it cook until the berries start to pop slightly and the sauce will start to thicken on its own. It should only take about 15 to 20 minutes. I add the vanilla extract last and then transfer it to a container to cool. Just remember to pull out those anise pods so nobody bites into that. And now for the stuffing. I am using vegan sausage from Light Life, but you could use whatever brand you like best. Celery, parsley, onions, shallot, mushrooms, and apple, salt, pepper, thyme, and sage, and vegetable stock. Oh, and some vegan butter too. And of course my bread for the stuffing. And I bought a whole grain baguette and just let it sit out to go stale for a couple of days. Now I'm just cubing it up to about one inch chunks. I've chopped my veggies and the grated apple. The vegan butter now goes into a large saute pan and I'll cook all the veggies except for the parsley and the apple for now. And just let that all cook down for a couple of minutes to render the veggies and then I add in the parsley and the apple. the salt, pepper, sage, and thyme, and then just let that all cook down for a couple of minutes together. Add all of the veggies to the bowl with the bread cubes, and now in the same saute pan, cook the sausages. I'm just breaking up the links to smaller pieces, and I'm gonna cook that out until it starts to brown. Now add the sausage to the bowl of the bread and the veggies, and then just toss everything to combine. Oh yeah, and add the vegetable stock to it at this point too. You're going to pour all of it into a baking dish and bake it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about an hour. I like to cook my roasted veggies at the same time that I bake the field roast so that it all comes out at the same time. And I'm just trimming up the Brussels sprouts, putting a light drizzle of oil, and then salt and pepper is really all that these need. Into the oven to roast for about 20 to 30 minutes. And the same thing goes for the sweet potatoes. Lightly oiled, a little bit of salt and pepper, and these are actually gonna bake for closer to an hour or until they're fork tender. Now for my field roast, I've just chopped up some celery, carrots, and onions with a splash of vegetable stock. The field roast is already seasoned, so you really don't have to do anything to it. Just cover it and bake it for about 45 minutes to an hour. 
and there is everything that I make for my Thanksgiving dinner for one. Now, of course, this serves more than one person. It would probably serve closer to four people. So you can bet that I'm having leftovers, and honestly, that is one of the best parts of Thanksgiving dinner. I get to eat it all again the next day. I gotta tell you, I'm impressed. This is probably the best spread that I've done in a lot of years. So um, I've already tasted the stuffing. As soon as it came out of the oven, I couldn't help myself. I took a big scoop of it. And I almost wasn't even going to make stuffing this year. I was just kind of like, eh, stuffing, I mean, do I really need that? This is the star of my plate this year. You, if you try one recipe, it has to be this apple sage sausage stuffing recipe. It is so good. Mm. It is so perfect. All the flavors are just spot on. This is a perfect stuffing recipe. I do love roasted Brussels sprouts and my sweet potatoes are pretty plain but I mean I only just really hit them with a little bit of olive oil and some salt and pepper and to me that's all they need. Sweet potatoes to me that's all they need. This mashed cauliflower with my fat free gravy is really to die for. I've been making this recipe not just for Thanksgiving, but I do make this for just like regular dinner any time of the year. Mm. It's such a better option in my opinion than just like making up mashed white potatoes. I bet you if you made mashed cauliflower this year, people won't even realize that they're eating cauliflower and not potatoes. It's just a little bit of a healthier option. And then the field roast. Mm. That is really good. Now I will say because all you've been hearing me talk about is tofurkey, tofurkey, tofurkey. So it's kind of like, well, why don't I have a tofurkey? I couldn't find one. I think because I'm a couple weeks earlier than Thanksgiving and the stores just don't have them yet. I called three different stores and they didn't have it yet. So I went with the field roast. I've had the field roast before. I do absolutely love it. But there's just sort of like a little nostalgic place in my heart for the tofurkey. I think because when I first went vegan, vegetarian many, many years ago, Tofurkey was really the only option that we had. And so while I don't really love the tofurkey, I mean, vegan stuff has come so far and this field roast is absolutely perfect. So I don't know, I think it's just like a little bit of a nostalgia that I have about the tofurkey that I do like to have it on my Thanksgiving because that's where I started. But definitely if you can find the field roast, it is totally worth it. And it's so cheap too. That little roast was like six bucks. Now my homemade cranberry sauce, I've been sharing this recipe with you guys for years. I top this on desserts, I put this on fillings for cakes, I've used it as a topping of my cheesecake before. This cranberry sauce recipe is life. Mm. I don't know what I like the best. I'm telling you guys, this year my vegan Thanksgiving dinner for one is just perfection. So I really do hope that you're going to try at least one of, if not all, of the recipes. I really think you're going to find something that you love with what I'm offering here for your Thanksgiving spread. And last, but definitely not least, the raw no-bake maple cream cake. I decided to go a little bit different route than the traditional pumpkin pie this year, and this cake is a real winner. I've already tasted it, and I've already shared this recipe, so if you guys didn't catch the full tutorial on how to make this dessert, just definitely click the links below and you'll see how to make this whole thing. Mmm, it was so good. I love maple, and the creamy texture of this cake loaded up with maple, and then I did that little drizzle of maple molasses glaze on top. Date walnut crust. You guys, there's not much more to say about this. So if you want a little bit of a different spin from the traditional pumpkin pie, and I'm sure somebody's going to bring a pumpkin pie to Thanksgiving dinner, right? You will wow everybody with this new recipe. So I do hope that you'll try it. Mm, I love Thanksgiving. I love food so much. I love good food. And if you love good food, you definitely came to the right place. So if you're liking this series for how to cook vegan for beginners, 
definitely subscribe to my channel, leave a comment below, and don't forget to give a like to this video if you did like it. And of course, there'll be more great baking videos to come your way. Stay tuned because as I mentioned, for me, the day after Thanksgiving just barrels straight ahead into Christmas and doesn't stop for about a month. So I have a really awesome new cake for you. And of course, it's for my favorite Christmas character, the Grinch. And so you're definitely going to want to check that out. That'll be coming out in just a couple of days. So, um... Yeah, that's about it. So, happy Thanksgiving to all of you guys. I really just want to say thank you to all of you for your support, your encouragement, your kind words. Just, I do read all the comments, and you guys have been so great and so supportive, and I really just do appreciate you guys so much. I want to give a special thank you, as always, to my patrons on Patreon and my pals in PayPal. I say it all the time, but seriously, like, your support that you've been showing me, some of you guys for over two years now, and you just continue to support me through those platforms, I really just can't thank you enough. It means so much every week that I look in there and I see who's still in there hanging with me in Patreon, and then I get special emails through PayPal from people supporting me from all over the place. And I really just want to thank you guys so much, like for real. I, I can't express how much it means to me that you feel to want to support me with your generosity the way that you are and it just really means a lot it is what has kept Gretchen's Bakery going for all of this time because there's been a lot of times where I just didn't think I was going to keep on going so without you guys and your support this probably would have been gone a long time ago but you believed in me and you encouraged me and you supported me and so thank you so much you guys are awesome and I will plug my Patreon and PayPal donation pages if you think that you can help support me and Gretchen's Bakery continue for really as little as a dollar a month definitely click the links below to find out out how. Alright you guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon. Until then, happy vegan baking and cooking. Bye for now.